Hello, my name is Eric. I want to talk now about one part of life that is very, very important. And it's also fun. So there's two parts of life. One is work, and the other is fun. And reading can be either work or it can be fun. There are some reasons why it's so important. Number one is imagination. By reading, you are exposed to so many wonderful things. This helps your imagination when it comes to creating and thinking. By reading, you are painting those pictures of the story in your mind. Books can take you anywhere you want to go. Often you say, I want to go to this place and that place. I want to go to New York City. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to London, for example. Well, there's one easy way you can go there. You can pick up a book about London, which is full of information, or you can read a novel, which is imagination, an imaginary story about some people living in London, and suddenly you are no longer in your room or wherever you are sitting. You are suddenly in London. Where? In your mind. And then you become part of the story. Books can take you anywhere you want to go. All you have to do is open the page of the book or use a, a book on the screen, either way. But suddenly you have transported yourself. You are no longer physically where you are. You are somewhere else in your mind. The second reason is also very important in life. In life, there are so many distractions. When you start to do something, somebody wants you to do something else, or you want to do something else, you want to read and you watch TV and listen to the radio and listen to music all at the same time. Is that a good idea? No. Especially if you want to have a book. Because if you start doing everything, you have too many distractions. You want to focus and concentrate on what you're doing. On one thing. You sit still and read. Or you can lay down and read too. You can stand up and read too, whatever. You are training your body and your mind. And if your child is with you and he's too slow, then you tell him to relax and focus on what you are reading. This helps you or your child to focus and concentrate on other activities later because you are used to doing it. What's the third reason? Well, third reason is reading improves your memory. When you read a book, you are taking in all that the book is about. People, places, things. When you read, you're using your muscle memory, which lies in the cerebral part of your brain. Using this muscle helps your memory long term. I'm sure you've probably heard of muscle memory. It's the same kind of thing. The next thing is communication. Albert Einstein had a very famous comment. Albert Einstein said basically he thought about a lot of different things, but the important point was communicating it. Communicating is telling somebody something or listening to somebody or reading something. It helps you to communicate as adults and gives you more to talk about. Now, what does a baby start doing when a baby starts learning a language? The baby starts babbling. The baby starts making sounds. Then eventually he makes the sounds into words. And then he makes the words into sentences. So reading is basically looking at sentences in books, in articles. It's information. You're communicating. You're either reading what people are telling you or people want you to think about the story or you're telling. Reading also is entertainment. What's the cheapest entertainment you can have? Well, that's very simple. 
Some people think that dreaming is entertainment. So if you go to sleep and dream, no, well, that's cheap. But there's one problem. Some people don't dream. So if you are awake, you can find some book to do, particularly if it's a novel. There are basically two kinds of books. One is what we call a non-fiction book. That means it's true. It's generally information or it's a story. One type of non-fiction book is what something called a biography. Bio means life. Graph means learning about something. A biography means some person writes a book or an article, usually a book, about another person. Then we have another word we call autobiography. Auto means you are writing about your own life. Now, many young kids like to write about their life in another book. They actually write about something. This is called a diary. So, it's a good, cheap, free entertainment. Now, what's a very important place you should go to in your city? A place you, could abs you should absolutely love more than school. What is it? Well, you should love your library. You should also love a bookstore because books can open up the world that you might never have imagined before. And the thing is not so much about the number of books you read. If you should read good books and your parents will often tell you what are the good books. But when children are very young, they can't determine what are good books and what are not. So there's two ways to go about it. One way is you tell the child what books to read. Or number two, you ask the child to tell you also what books he or she wants to read. And you mix them. The idea is to start children at a young age, a very young age, reading. So they love it. So, what are some more reasons why reading is important? Another reason is bonding, nurturing, and one-on-one -on -one attention from parents during reading encourages children to form a positive association with books and reading. It's a very common custom when children want to go to sleep, go to bed, sometimes when they don't want to go to bed, you say, I'll read you a story. Or you ask them, would you like me to read a story? And often they would say, yes. And so the child is laying down on the bed and you sit by the bed and you start reading a story. And obviously this would be at the child's age, whatever level he or she is. But children love to have the parents read them to sleep at night. And so they're reading and eventually they fall asleep. And then the next day you start reading again. And often I'll ask you to read the same story many, many times because they love it when you sit by the bed and read to them before they go to sleep. It's also a way to show that you love your children very much. So reading is love. Reading is a way for parents to show their children they love their children very much. Another reason is language development. As I mentioned before, babies and children learn to talk. How do they learn to talk? They learn to talk by hearing words. At the beginning, when they hear words, they start talking and what they call babble. They start just making sounds and sounds become words, words become sentences, and then sentences become paragraphs, paragraphs become chapters, and then eventually you have chapters become a book. The more they hear, the more likely they are to talk and understand what you are saying to them. Your child's language skills and literacy depend on you talking and reading to them. Doesn't that sound important? Another reason which I mentioned before is it's cheap or free education. 
If your child says something that many children say, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. What do you do? Well, one simple way is you give him or her a book. You try to give them a book they like, and particularly if it's a book that they like to read, and they often read it themselves and want you to read to them. So reading a book for something that you want to learn also saves you a lot of money. So you go and you buy a book, and you know how expensive if you take a class in something is, so why not spend time reading about it instead? You can teach yourself with specific books. We often call them the do-it-yourself books. You go into the bookstore and you see all these is often called self-learning exercises. And there's a series of books about for people and it's for dumb people. And so it's very, very easy, simple. So you have to consider the level. Is it very simple and easy or is it very difficult? So Albert Einstein talked about a lot of things that were very important. He's very famous for E equals MC squared, but he had to communicate it. And so you can read about Albert Einstein and a lot of other people, very, very famous people. So if you're interested in learning about rainbows, you saw a rainbow at the beginning, you can read books about weather. Now there's a question here. What causes rainbows? I'm not going to tell you. Don't ask your parents to tell you. Go and find a book and read about it. So supplying to a variety of books will, in, will get them interested in something and get them to learn even more. Reading is one of the basic skills that children should learn at a very, very young age. How young? Think about it a moment. How young should the child be when a child starts discovering books? It's going to sound really funny now. When your child is very young, you give them picture books. Pictures are very good. So the child doesn't know how to read, but you give them pictures. And then the child looks at pictures because kids like to look at pictures. So you start the child when the child is very young with picture books. And then later you're using very, very simple language books. Another reason is fluency. What is fluency? Fluency is the ability to read with speed, accuracy, and expression. You are having powerful and developing powerful and effective language. There's a simple rule. The more you read, the more fluent you become. This is very important for children and adults. There is a famous story about Demosthenes, who was a very famous Greek many, many years ago. And he wanted to become a very good public speaker. He wanted to become famous for the things that he could speak. So how did he develop his speaking skills? We call this rhetoric. Rhetoric means basically speaking. What did he do? Well, we're talking about an adult now. What did he do? He put stones in his mouth. Stones in his mouth. Not big ones. Not rocks. Rocks are very, very big stones and he started speaking with stones in his mouth and the basic thing there he was looking at was pronunciation now the same way that you use stones if you want to become a famous public speaker oh one thing you don't spit the stones out you don't spit in at people in reading the thing is pictures so there's two kinds of books one is a picture book and the other is a book with only writing. And then you have a combined book, which is pictures in the picture book and also reading in the picture book. And there are many kinds. They use both pictures and language because the idea, again, is trying to read well, trying to read and enjoy reading. Sometimes you read because you have to, 
And these are books for instructions, particularly. Particularly if you go to school. Ah, I remember that word, school. Your teacher tells you to read the, these their books. Well, you read it because you have to. Now, if you read novels, for example, you read them because you like it because of imagination. And reading makes you smarter. We know it's been proven that reading makes you smarter. Readers display greater knowledge of how things work, vocabulary, and language development, as well as getting information about people, places, and things. So, there are many different ways and reasons to read. So, when should you teach your children how to read? Start with the picture books. And then start with very simple books at the level of the child. And then as a child develops the reading skills, then you start introducing imaginary tales. And an example of imaginary tales are fairy tales. You all know what fairy tales are because children love fairy tales. And there's two ways you can do fairy tales. Number one, you could read to them. You read to them from a book when they're very young, fairy tales. And then as they get older, you give them books so they can read fairy tales themselves. And then the third part is you ask them to tell you the basic story of the fairy tales. And so you have three ways to do it. So reading is one of the basic skills of life. And as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the big ideas and one of the real reasons you read is not just to become smarter or to learn something or to be able to talk about something. It's imagination. And the imaginary tales we call novels, which means they're in one person's mind. And then they communicate it to you by putting it down in a book so you can see what's in various people's minds. And there are a lot of people in the world. And some of them are very, very good writers. And they're very good novelists. And then we have what we call great books in the world. Great books. And these are people that have been dead a long, long, long time. But they wrote down, or somebody wrote down, what they had to say. There's a man called Socrates, who's quite famous in Western civilization. He lived about 400 BC. BC means before Christ. He had a long, long time ago. And he did not write anything down. He spoke to people, but people wrote down what he said. And so we read something that some man said about 2,500 years ago. We read what he said because somebody wrote it down. And so we can read about it. So you have, I mentioned biography, you write your own story. Many of you probably will have diaries in your life, or you read something about, an, it's called an autobiography. People write about their own life. But the whole point is you are writing something down and people are reading it. So imagination is very important. And so if I want to say one most important read, excuse me, one most important reason to read, I would say imagination. Now we have a word called genre. It's G-E-N-R-E. Genre means a style of books, a type of books. One very famous genre is something we call science fiction. Science fiction is very interesting. It's also fascinating because it talks about something in the future or something in another world. And it's different ways. It's all imagination of what one person writes. And there are many different stories that are in science fiction. So I recommend to you, if you're much, much older, you read some science fiction. And the man to start with science fiction is a man called Isaac Asimov. He wrote 500 books. Of course, not all of them were science fiction, 
but he's very, very famous for his science fiction books. And he started, first of all, with a series of books, which was three books called Foundation Series. And it was so good that 25 years later, he wrote two more books after 25 years because people asked him to write some more about this particular style and this particular story. So I repeat, the Foundation Series of three books, later five books, by Isaac Asimov, Isaac Asimov, is probably the best place to start reading science fiction because it's all imagination, all imagination. Another type of imagination for boys would be war stories or athletics, and girls like to read romance stories. These are all imagination. That means this is just a story in one person's head and you can enjoy them tremendously. So, you are never alone. I'm going to repeat that. You are never alone if you have books around you, if you have books to read, because then you can escape into the another world and enjoy a new world. And these are some of the reasons you learn to read. And so people that don't like to read are missing something very important in life. And you are finding that. And if you find that at a young age, a very young age, it'll last you the rest of your life. There's a story about a man that was very, very sick. And he was in the hospital. And they told him he was going to die. Well, he accepted that because he was very, very old. He accepted. He was very old. I'm not going to tell you how old he was, but I'll just tell you he was very old. And so there was one thing he wanted to do before he died. He wanted to finish one book that he was reading. So he said to people, he said, well, you're very old. What do you think about dying? He said, I don't mind dying, but I want to finish this book first. So that means that person really understood one of the basic pleasures and one of the basic necessities of life. I can't die until I finish reading this book. That's all.